I've been a mother for over 22 years, but not until my oldest daughter was three did I begin to build boundaries. It was pretty messy, as you can imagine. An earthquake domino drop occurred in every relationship. And though it was terribly uncomfortable, even scary, since there was a threat to my sense of security and confidence, that life earthquake began a domino drop of a false identity and a false sense of self. This brought me a whole lot closer to my true self because who I was on the exterior began to align much more closely with who I was on the interior. Or another way of describing it can be explained in this very simple phrase. I was learning to come home to me. Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich, the certified life coach and the homeschool mentor found at www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. And on today's episode, I offer you the potential to have your own boundary breakthrough in your homeschool mom life. So welcome to the podcast. From that time on, I have been drawn to authenticity, freedom, and purpose. But there was work to do. I had to own who I was, why I was here on the planet. I had to own how I was speaking to myself, how I spoke to others, and how I expected others to speak to me. Then I began to explore who I was, how I wanted to show up in relationships, and work toward healthy relationships with myself and with others. Boundaries have required me to assess my relationship with others, of course, but more importantly, I had to learn to assess my relationship with myself. If you identify with any of the things that I'm speaking to today, I want a boundary breakthrough for you too. If you want to consider coaching with me so you can walk toward authenticity, internal freedom, and more meaningful relationships in your life, ask me for a booking link. You can connect with me on the show notes to this episode found at www.capturingthecharmlife.com and find your Build Your Boundaries checklist too. I'm encouraged by the quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson that says, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. What I didn't realize before I began building boundaries is that it's more than just not being trampled upon or feeling trampled upon. I discovered that I could choose my activities and my people on purpose and feel so much freer and more peaceful. I discovered that building boundaries meant I came into myself more I established a relationship with myself and nurtured myself. I discovered that I could create boundaries, or in other words, determine how I wanted to show up in different relationships intentionally. I discovered that I couldn't do everything, and I learned to make peace with that. I was more present with my kids and less reactive because I created a plan for those challenges and also addressed my needs. I listened to others more. I became less likely to quote unquote other people, placing them in a category of good or bad. I've learned that there's a direct relationship between how well I know myself and how much I'm honoring that person myself and walking in integrity with that person and pointing to me and also how strong my boundaries are. And I learned to build authentic, supportive connections that nurtured my true self. I wonder if you identify with some of the things I'm speaking to today. Is this you? You know you have issues with boundaries, but you're not exactly clear on what the dynamics are. You're not sure why, and you're definitely not sure how to change it. Maybe you spend too much time thinking about what other people think about your homeschool, or knowing that you want more time for yourself, but you're not getting it. 
Maybe you're answering the phone more often, more frequently than you should be during your homeschool days instead of giving your children those eyeball to eyeball moments. Maybe you're recognizing that you need more time spent on developing you, but you're just not sure how or where you can do that. Maybe you're spending more time doing extracurriculars because people are asking you to participate. They think that if you are a good homeschool mom, you will do that at whatever that activity is, even though you might want to have a quiet day at home. Maybe you're giving your time away to meaningful things, but they don't feel like the most important things. Maybe you're fielding unsupportive questions about your homeschool choice and you don't need to respond to them. Maybe you're feeling exhausted or spent by conflict with your partner. Maybe you know you're not showing up as you'd like with your kids, but you're just not sure why. Maybe you feel guilty or ashamed at how you're showing up with your kids. Maybe you're desperately wanting a separate space or time away from your kids and you definitely feel guilty. Maybe you feel your kids are mistreating you or disrespecting you, but you just can't quite figure it out. Or is that just them being kids? And maybe you feel unsupported and you don't think you can ask even the most important people in your life to help you. If you wonder if you need to do a little boundary building, you can ask yourself the following questions. Here's where you might need to grab your journal and a pen. Do you feel like you have to address every question that your child or partner or friend asks, no matter what you're doing at the moment? When someone asks for your help, do you have a hard time saying no? Do you feel like you never get to your thing because you're helping someone else with their thing? Do you feel like someone consistently speaks unkindly or disrespectfully towards you, but you don't want to address it because dot, dot, dot? Do you feel responsible for attending to needs outside your home, despite feeling extended within your home? When you set a boundary, do you feel like someone pushes back or gets angry and won't permit you to maintain that boundary without conflict? Are you aware that your own limiting thoughts are keeping you from experiencing satisfaction in your homeschool mom life? Do you feel like you'd rather not set boundaries because it feels like you're letting others down? Are you familiar with boundary breaking issues with your own parents, but you're just not sure how they influenced you? Do you feel like you'll lose important people in your life if you set boundaries? And do you have difficult time making decisions? Okay, that was a lot to assess and consider. Where are you at? What do you identify with? What didn't make any sense to you? Nope, didn't have that issue. Or maybe there's something else on the list that I haven't included. I'd love to hear from you. You're always welcome to send me a message. Straight up, if you identify with these thoughts, though, you need to bolster or maybe for the first time ever build your boundaries. Imagine if you were happy doing your homeschool life thing and didn't feel affected or reactive toward what other people think about your homeschool. Imagine if you had enough time for yourself or your kids knew they shouldn't interrupt you when you were on the phone or you knew who you were outside the homeschool mom identity. Imagine if you were intentional about your homeschool activity choices and not just doing them because everyone else around you is doing them. Imagine if you felt supported in your homeschool choice. Imagine if you had the energy to engage your homeschool kids to really be present with them. Or if you knew for sure you were showing up as you would like to be with your kids. Imagine if you didn't feel guilty or ashamed at how you're showing up with your kids. And imagine if you didn't feel your kids were mistreating you or disrespecting you. 
what would life be like in your homeschool mom life if you could put these things into place? How does that feel when I ask you that? I've come to understand that the energy we have for our homeschool mom lives is directly proportional to clear boundaries. The boundaries we have in our relationships, the boundaries we have in our relationship with ourselves, and how we nurture ourselves, learning to nurture the nurturer. So what is the work of the interior that we need to do to develop boundaries in our homeschool mom lives? It could be, of course, any number of things. Everyone has had different experiences in life, has learned different things along the way. We have natural personalities that have pensions towards different, let's call them challenges. But it could be any number of these things. The work we might need to engage in to build or bolster boundaries so that we can feel the way we want to feel, we can experience life the way we want to experience it within our homeschool lives, It might be any number of things, but certainly more often than not, we discover that our perspective on the present experience of life or relationships or circumstances isn't quite as we thought it was. Sometimes we need to learn how to navigate conflict with our important other people. Sometimes we need to render our painful childhood or teenage stories. Sometimes we need to build resilience muscles to navigate the hard things, more now than ever. Sometimes we need to create practices to feel fully alive in our lives, enabling creativity, our own unique creativity, and really living intentionally, not just living based on the daytimer. Sometimes we need to create a construct to deal with our challenges, to be super clear on what the challenges are and have a plan to deal with them. Sometimes we need to strengthen our ability to accept the realities of our life stories, approaching them with acceptance, and also determining to engage the cards we were originally dealt on purpose, not reactively. Sometimes we need to recognize how we can create attachment and connection with our kids. Sometimes we have to continue to hone in on the most important things in life, the simple things or the most valuable things to us, the things that matter to us, and live into them. Sometimes we need to understand how we're relating to the activities we're pursuing, like homeschooling or mothering, and determine whether we know We are enough in those spaces. And sometimes we need to build self-compassion strategies into our lives so we can be kind to ourselves despite our imperfections. And the last thing that I have for you to consider is that sometimes we need to create a plan to tackle our big emotions, recognize our emotional landscapes, understand how we interact with various things in our lives, different people, different scenarios, and know how to deal with those big emotions. What is the work of the interior that you are presently feeling called to in your homeschool mom life? I would love to hear. This may be a podcast where I get to share my thoughts, the things that I think might be the most relevant to you, sitting on my chair inside of my walk-in closet in the Kootenai Mountains of British Columbia, Canada. But I'm not just sitting here speaking to a computer. Actually, I am. But I know there are other people on the other side of this episode that are listening to what I'm sharing. And I hope many of you have come to know, I know you have, that I like breaking the sound barrier. In other words, I like feeling like I can actually connect with you real time. That doesn't always mean real, real time, as in non-Zoom time, but I love getting to know you in real time and discovering who is really listening to me on the other side. Is there a way I can support you in your homeschool mom journey now? Or are you just curious? Maybe you know me from a past life and you just wonder, what am I throwing out there? Who knows? But I know this. I'm not just sitting 
in my walk-in closet in the Kootenai Mountains of British Columbia. I'm here in your earbuds, or maybe I'm here with your device and a basket of laundry, or walking the dog, or various activities with your kids as you're out running the kids to another activity. I know that I am with you now. And I know that the things that you relate to in this episode don't have to stay the same way they are right now. I offer three ways to learn to build or bolster your boundaries. Have you heard of my boundary building journaling workbook? If you want a self-coaching tool to help you clarify, assess, and heal those boundary challenges, you can consider checking out the Boundary Building Journaling Workbook. It's on my website, capturingthecharmlife.com, but I also have an Etsy shop because I'm a, you know, graduated homeschool mom. Of course, I have an Etsy shop, (laughs) at least in the last number of months. I have an Etsy shop called Homeschool Mama Self-Care. All of the journaling workbooks are available there. Even the recently offered gratitude journal for homeschool moms. The Build Your Boundaries Journaling Workbook is your guide to self-exploration and empowerment. This 31-page workbook delves into the core of boundaries, relationships, and identity. Through journal questions and self-coaching tools, this workbook can help you unearth the reasons behind your boundary issues and empower you to clarify your needs, your relationships, and your sense of self or your relationship with yourself. Whether you're navigating homeschool challenges or seeking to redefine boundaries in various aspects of your life, I think this workbook can offer a transformative journey. It doesn't just address boundaries. It helps you unlock a deeper understanding of your purpose, transforming how you advocate for yourself and engage with your world. And it's written by me, who has definitely had this journey, this boundary setting, identity building, nurturing self journey. I share personal experiences and lessons I've learned. Let's say it's a beacon of authenticity for you, guiding you to freedom and purpose by redefining your relationships with others and most importantly with yourself. So if you're interested in the Building Boundaries Journaling Workbook, you can find that on my Etsy store, Homeschool Mama's Self-Care. That's the first way that you can learn to build or bolster your boundaries. The second and third ways that you can build or bolster boundaries would be to join a group coaching program or to join a one-on-one coaching program with me. Most people end up doing some form of one-on-one coaching with me because I tend to go deep. So if you're not someone that likes personal growth or doesn't really care to dig deep into the things that have affected you over the course of time, we're probably not a match, but I'm guessing that you've already figured that out and you're probably not listening to this episode anymore. I offer one-on-one coaching programs for the homeschool mom who wants to clarify her needs, strengthen her relationships, and own who she is so she can become more her. And I love doing this. I love walking alongside other women so they can become them. No, I will not burst into song, but if I were to, I would be singing This Is Me by The Greatest Showman soundtrack. Our goal when you join me in coaching is to clarify your needs, your relationships, and your relationship with yourself or your identity. Oh, and the biggest benefits? You are practically transforming how you approach yourself which I'm sure it's probably obvious. How you approach yourself is most definitely how you're going to approach others. Another big benefit is that you're shifting your relationships towards satisfying your needs, but also learning to satisfy other people's needs, therefore building stronger relationships. And the last biggest benefit I see, although there are probably more than three here, is that you get to clarify who you are, your identity. And if you clarify your identity, you are also clarifying your purpose. And feeling like you're living that life on purpose, 
Even though that may shift over the course of time and over the course of our lives, it feels meaningful. So we're going to clarify your identity and help you nurture the nurturer. So what's holding you back? I think it is time that you book a conversation with me. You can message me on the socials, or you can find my booking link on my website, capturingthecharmlife.com, and book a conversation with me. If you'd like to learn more about building or bolstering boundaries, you can head over to my website, capturingthecharmlife.com, and check out the show notes episode titled, A Homeschool Mom Podcast for Boundary Breakthroughs. At the end of the show notes, I offer all the discussions that I have, whether in podcast or written form, about the discussion on boundaries, how to develop boundaries in your homeschool life, practical and useful steps to boundaries in your homeschool, seven ways to find quiet and build boundaries in your homeschool life, seven effective tools to build boundaries and why you require them. The flip side of boundary building is developing our identity So I offer you a variety of podcast episodes also to dig deeper into who you are and why you need to choose personal growth in varying ways. Have you listened to my podcast episode, The Five Creative Ways to Design a Homeschool Mom Personal Vision? Or eight useful things I do to develop my homeschool mom identity. Also in my early days, I wrote about my identity as a home educator back when the only thing I spoke to on my website was home education, not homeschooling. I have a popular post titled Beyond Your Homeschool Mama Identity. Also, the 13 ways Taylor Swift can inspire your homeschool life will certainly help to round out how you see yourself. Six hidden challenges of the homeschool. Seven ways to live your best life. Your goal, if you're building or bolstering boundaries, is to transform how you engage with the world, your relationships, align with your needs to become more authentically you, and carve a purposeful path in your homeschool mom life. Hey, and if we haven't met and this is the first time you've connected with me, welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich, the homeschool mentor and certified life coach at www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. When I meet homeschool moms for the first time, my goal is to clarify what the challenge might be. Of course, in my experience, there are always other challenges that will arise over the course of time. But I listen. I listen deeply. I reflect back what I hear to help you clarify what's going on for you. Of course, there's no singular theme because everyone is unique, but I often have conversations about helping homeschool moms create a plan for big emotions, learning to instill self-compassion, learning why we don't care about ourselves deeply already, learning to instill boundaries, both with ourselves and with others, learning to nurture relationships, whether with our kids, partners, or other important people, leaning into de-schooling and child-led learning, and letting go of unrealistic expectations, fostering unique creativities in each of ourselves, and learning how to express it or channel it, and clarifying our personal purpose beyond the homeschool mom role. I do this through various forms, often one-on-one coaching, various group coaching programs, self-directed courses that you can access on on your own time, but also with my behind-the-scenes interaction. My goal is to help you shed what's not working so you can show up in your homeschool and your life authentically, purposefully, and confidently. So if you're considering life coaching or homeschool mentoring, schedule a conversation with me on the introductory page of my website, capturingthecharmlife.com. I'm so looking forward to meeting you. But I have to tell you, I have read your diary. A major boundary-breaking guffaw, you say? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay, well, I haven't read your literal diary, but I will tell you that in my efforts to understand you more, I sat down with Madame Chat GPT, and she shared a generic journal entry from Sarah, Sarah Strengthen, a made-up character 
that also has experienced boundary challenges in her homeschool mom life. And though I must tell you that I found this rather entertaining to read, I remember reading it out to my husband and he said to me, hmm, too verbose. I do not see that a homeschool mom would sit at the end of the day writing as this Sarah Strengthen did. And also, wow, the vocabulary. She has too much time on her hands. And indeed she does not. But I give you this entertaining and also rather accurate portrayal of Ms. Sarah Strengthen, homeschool mom extraordinaire challenged by boundaries. Dear journal, Sarah says, tonight as I sit in the dimly lit corner of my bedroom, the weight of the day seems to press harder against my chest. It's one of those nights when the silence is louder than any noise, where the whirlwind of thoughts is deafening and my pen feels like the only confidant to my inner turmoil. Today was filled with the usual juggling act, trying to balance the needs of the kids, their education, and the ever-elusive quest for personal time. (laughs) Verbose yet? (laughs) As I flipped through the pages of textbooks and tried to decipher math problems, a lingering feeling of guilt whispered in my ear. It's that voice, the one that questions every moment I steal for myself, every minute I dedicate to nurturing my own soul, and wonders if I'm falling short as a mother. Boundaries. That word echoes in my mind like a distant, uncharted territory. It's not just about saying no or setting limits. It's about the fear that engulfs me when I contemplate drawing lines within the relationships I value the most. How do I express my needs without feeling like I'm betraying the very essence of motherhood? Without feeling like I'm selfish for wanting moments that are solely mine? Tonight, as I put the kids to bed, a sense of loneliness crept in, a paradoxical loneliness, despite being surrounded by laughter and love. The loneliness that stems from the inability to voice my true desires, the fear of being misunderstood, and the overwhelming weight of societal expectations pressing down upon my shoulders. Sarah says, I'm afraid, dear journal, afraid of the repercussions of setting boundaries, afraid that asserting my needs might lead to rejection or disdain, afraid that by choosing my own path, I might inadvertently drift away from the warmth of my family's embrace. She says the thought of losing that connection, that unspoken bond that ties us together, terrifies me more than anything else. There's a constant battle within me, one between the longing for personal growth and the duty I feel toward my family, The nights like these when the house is quiet and the stars twinkle through my window are the moments I steal for myself. Actually, I think you're probably watching Netflix or scanning through TikTok. But anyways, yeah, maybe you're watching the stars twinkle through the window. Okay, so she says, yet, even in these stolen moments, the doubt persists. Am I doing enough? Am I giving enough? Will my children understand my choices? Or will they perceive my pursuit of personal growth as a lack of devotion? I can't ignore the gnawing sense of inadequacy, the fear that I'm not enough. It's a whisper that grows louder with each passing day, a relentless critic that questions my choices, my capabilities, and my worthiness. But tonight, amidst these uncertainties and fears, there's a glimmer of hope. A hope that perhaps there's a way to navigate this labyrinth Okay, like really, (laughs) nobody's talking like that anymore. Anyway, navigate this labyrinth of emotions, a way to set boundaries without severing connections, a way to embrace personal growth without compromising the love I have for my family. And so I cling to this hope, this fragile beacon in the darkness as I embark on the journey to find balance, to discover the art of building boundaries that liberate rather than isolate Maybe, just maybe, there's a path ahead that leads to harmony, a place where I'm not torn between responsibilities and aspirations, but can gracefully embrace both. Till then, dear journal, you remain my silent witness to these unspoken fears and dreams, a sanctuary for the battles waged within my heart. Yours, Sarah Strengthen. (laughs) Okay. Ah, hilarious, right? 
Okay, love her vocabulary. By the way, if you have not heard anything that Madame ChatGPT, it's what I call her, Madame ChatGPT can offer you, you have now, and now you know what it sounds like to have something written in AI. So it sounds kind of absurd, some elements of it, at least the language, the level of um, verbal expression, deep in the dark, dank moments of the night, probably not our reality most of the time. However, did you relate to a few things within her diary entry? Because when I look through, I do. I have experienced many things to which she spoke. I'm curious if that's your experience as well. So if your goal is to shed what's not working so you can show up in your homeschool and your life authentically, purposefully, and confidently, consider life coaching. Schedule a conversation with me. You can find the booking link on the first page of my website, capturingthecharmlife.com. I'm looking forward to meeting you. If this podcast was an encouragement for you, would you share it with someone you know would benefit too? And would you consider sharing a review on Spotify or Apple? I so appreciate Anne Catherine's words. She shared that this podcast is great for all parents. I really enjoy listening to this podcast because it makes me feel not so alone in my deep thinking about raising kids. Maybe not the way everyone else is raising them. You'll like this podcast if you want to raise independent thinkers, but also remember that you, as a parent, are still growing too. Amen, Anne Catherine. I'm with you. We are still doing this personal growth journey our entire lives. Thank you so much for sharing your review with me. You can find all the show notes and resources discussed in this episode over at www.capturingthecharmlife.com. Until next week, I want for you and your homeschool kids to turn your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms. You got this, girlfriend.